Yeah, I think uh, let's go south. This is just going to be uh, the end point at the farm. I, I think it's the big farm, though, with the uh, the high tower and the chance to get into the house. It might be uh, just the field and field with no no barn or anything, but let's go down and find out. We'll, we'll take that road down and then we'll investigate uh, to the south a bit. Head down toward Dennis Town. Okay. Other than driving, draining focus, is there any negative to building driving skill? There's no negative to building it other than you're using focus, which you already know. But I here's the thing. I drive like a grandma. I don't ever go typically above about 30 miles per hour. Uh, so there's no chance generally. I do on occasion lose control at speed, but uh, generally speaking, uh, there's very little chance I'm going to lose control at any speed. So I'm not gaining anything by allowing my driving skill to increase. Um, it doesn't make me faster, and I wouldn't care if it did because I could always drive faster anyway. I, I get no benefit out of it, basically. I could stay at driving zero and be perfectly happy forever. Usually I turn it off immediately. I just forget. So... But um, if, if you're somebody who likes to cruise along at mm, 100 miles per hour, then um, yeah, driving skill might be important for you when you're trying to smash the brakes and not go into a power slide. But for me, as slow as I go and the types of vehicles I drive, it has absolutely no benefit. It's just a suck on my focus. So it's best to uh, just turn it off. Besides, if you get too much driving skill, you can't do fancy bootleg turns by popping the parking brake while turning at speed. You, you can't do that kind of fun stuff because the driving skill prevents you from skidding. So you don't want that. You want to you wanna be able to have fun while you're driving. So you want low driving skill so you can do the creative stuff. Okay, I think we went... Did we go down there or did I say I don't care because I didn't need the RV and... Let's go down there. <laughs> I don't remember if we went down there or not. So there is a vehicle. There's no RV. Oh, solar vehicle. Um, I think I... No, the map memory is not filled in, so I did not actually come here. All right, we'll go look real quick. We'll see if it gives me some super awesome bow. If you're not aware, this is one of the locations you can go to get... Uh, a pretty cool bow. The tents will commonly have bows and arrows. Well, actually bows. I don't remember seeing too many arrows. And there's quite often a uh, an RV, a luxury RV, parked right here. That's what this little space is for. <laughs> it's fun to get out, depending on exact placement of trees and build or trees and such. You can have an adventure getting it out of there. Nothing. Where the hell's the entrance to that? To <laughs> that. What the hell? Where's the entrance? <laughs> it it kind of seems like it should be there. I'm not seeing an entrance to this 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 tent. That's the first time I've seen that. That's gonna be where the bow is, huh? And there's no uh, no inherent zombies associated with the camp. So, unless you got zombies wandering in from some other location, but there's none just here because it's here. 4x4 four four that actually works. Pretty nice. Not much gas, but that's easy to fix. Striking out on the tents. Hey, solar vehicle, how about you? Look at that, two pristine full storage batteries, an electric SUV that's drivable right off the bat. Now that's a good vehicle right there. That is one of my really, really preferred ones. I mean, of course I love the Humvees, but stumbling across one of these is uh, really, really good because it's completely quiet. It makes no noise while driving, so you can park right up against a building and not worry about attracting zombies on the other side of the building. Like I'm having with the, the stupid semi with its 38 noise. 
the uh, storage batteries last plenty long um, and you've got storage space galore you got four trunks back here so yeah this is an awesome vehicle we will make note remember position what do you got a 17 inch wheel and a flashlight so yeah and easy to get out of here too Huh, I might have to think about that. I might switch over while we're in uh, attempted uh, loot and scoot mode. Well, we got another tent with no entrance. <laughs> what is happening to these? Who broke the tents? There we go. Apparently there was a zipper on the other one. I just wasn't quite seeing the zipper or I tried to interact with the wrong space. To make that zipper a little more prevalent. Let's go back and check the uh, <laughs> the one that I could not figure out. Oh, right there. A condom, two condoms. Ooh, we could uh, we could store a lot of uh, you know liquid. <laughs> Volume three point seven five liters. This pocket can contain a liquid. Preferably protein shakes. Yes, yes, I know. I'll stop. All right. So, yeah, I got to think about that, actually. That is, uh, that is a really good vehicle. All right, well, we'll stay in the Humvee for now. I'm going to keep that in mind, though. Like I said, that's, that's a really good vehicle for uh, doing the sneaky stuff. When you're just trying to loot and scoot, especially if you're moving around at night. All right, it is the one I figured. So we've got the uh, the tall silo that gives you the view. It's it's five floors tall or five level tall uh, versus three for the normal silos. So you get a much better view around. And then we've got the house on one side and the barn on the other. What I want to do, we're in the Humvee now. We're only making sound 23 instead of 38. So we've cut down our noise a bit. I'm still going to go slow, though. Wheel, get the M4 out. I would like to get to the top of the tower because we've got some we could uh, we could see around us. No chance of uh, gear on top of this one, unfortunately, unlike the radio towers. The danger is the barn. As soon as I come around this corner. Eek. Eek. All right, they haven't gotten out of the barn yet. Cool. So, map level five. Learned nothing except for a camp. And there's the fungal tower from earlier. Fungal bloom. All right, so it's open area. Maybe we can make it to this road network and come up on the backside of Moortown. Good to know. Yeah, I don't know why this this particular tower is special. I guess whoever just designed the map section decided he wanted a, a different <laughs> silo that was just better than the other silos. He wasn't going to settle for a regular farm silo. All right, now I'm going to go... We're not going to leave the vehicle here where I try to get to the... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the danger of the vehicle not starting. I try to start it, then I start moving my character, and I end up out of the vehicle, <laughs> which could cause a huge amount of movement points loss. I'm going to go around the entire thing and uh, approach the house from the far south side. Hey there, smoker zombie and zombie and cockroaches and other zombies. So we're going to... Try to get around them in a way that they don't draw towards the house. And we'll slide back down. Zombie dog is right behind me. Why are you right behind me, zombie dog? You've ruined my approach. Will you fight a giant rattlesnake? Is there a snake rattle or a snake zombie dog truce in effect? Is he going for me or the snake? Well, there is not a zombie dog snake truce. <laughs> what do you think? All right. It's an even up fight so far. What are your bets? 
<laughs> I've never seen this matchup before. Catching up with chat. I had my chat scrolled up, so I've missed a bunch. <laughs> hey there, Shiv. Glad you're enjoying the content. Welcome to the stream. Is there any noob-friendly CDDA tutorial out there? Uh, look up. Go to YouTube. I've got literally thousands of hours of Cataclysm over on YouTube. Uh, I don't expect you to watch it all. <laughs> I see somebody said go to my YouTube channel. But in particular... The most recent new player friendly one I've done is uh, look up Vormithrax and new player. And that will get you the uh, new player first days tutorial. I'll just walk you through what to do in the first day. It's not a how do you press every button. It's not that early of a run. But it's a once you've at least learned how to click the basic buttons, I show you how you can do well in the very starting scenario. Uh, my plan is I'm actually working on doing an updated tutorial. So there you go. People now know. Uh, I don't know exactly when I'll have it out. I'll try to get it done this weekend, or at least the start of it done this weekend. But uh, I've got a ridiculous amount of stuff over my YouTube channel. All right. There's a zombie goose treaty. <laughs> I wasn't aware of the uh, the zombie druce or zombie goose treaty. All right, let's find out. We'll just uh, oops, as soon as I get the focus back on the game, let's see what happens. Oh, look at that! He's down, a rattlesnake for the win. But now he's an angry rattlesnake. <laughs> so if you're not aware, most animals will leave you alone until they get hurt. As soon as something hits them, anything hits them, they go berserk. So, be very cautious about that. Uh, most general wild animals, other than like, you know, some of the wolves or bobcats or stuff, they're, they're pretty uh, nasty. But for the most part, a lot of these things will leave you alone until something hits them, and then they go into this berserk status, and they'll come right at you. They'll come for you. So, now we got a giant snake just kind of rolling at me here. He's not going to be able to get through the vehicle, but I need to get him far enough away that I can get back up into the house without him uh, sneaky snaking his way back up to me. They're not terribly fast either, so I can probably outwalk him, but we're pretty damaged. All right, let's try to circle around. Uh, but yeah, I am, uh, I am plotting and planning a brand new tutorial up to date. My original tutorial is about four years old now, and it's pretty... It's probably still 80, 90% accurate, because not that much in the basic interface and mechanics has changed, but there are going to be some notable exceptions where it's going to be out of date. But it'll still get most of the points across. But every time I go back and look at that first tutorial, it was the very first thing I ever put on the uh, on the internets. And, uh, oh my god, I cringe. I cringe! The, uh, <laughs> oh my god, the voice quality. Oh, the sound quality was so bad. Made a few strides, few improvements since then. What you got, what you got? Trowels and shovels under the hood, which I don't need, but we'll take. A drive belt and some straw. Not nearly as good as last time. It's a good opportunity for, for tool loot, and uh, we, we failed pretty hard on that one. All right. Also, if you're new to Cataclysm, uh, make sure you understand the Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead is a zombie avoidance game, <laughs> not a zombie fighting game. You want to avoid zombies until at least later in or, uh, you know, if you're playing a power character. That's different once you know what you're doing, but uh, you are going to die a lot if you are a new player and you come into this thinking you're just going to you're just going to rock and roll over the zombies. That ain't going to happen. You're going to get et. PX4 Storm. I don't like 9mm. I just, I've never liked 9mm anything. Just, even, even the JHP. The damage is just too low. Might as well throw rocks at them. Um, we don't have much in the way of weapons currently. I got a few shotguns and we got the M4. I, I don't think I'm going to take it. I almost never pick up 9mm anymore. Almost never. Just don't bother. Those, no, regular glasses. 
Some multivitamins. Oh yeah, another thing to talk about. Uh, if you're playing current experimental, uh, scurvy is back. Vitamin C deficiency is active and working. So just start taking your multivitamins again. Vitamins were broke for years. They did absolutely nothing. Then somebody added the blood loss system, which tied into the iron content in your blood uh, for some of the factors. So iron became the only thing that was actually doing anything in the vitamin system. But now as of a week ago, I forget exactly when, not long ago, uh, scurvy has been turned back on. So you will eventually suffer negative consequences if you are vitamin C deficient. Those are still the only two that have an effect, but um, just be aware. Steel chain, huh? I want my uh, <laughs> medium tin can of coconut. Is that coconut water? Coconut milk? Yeah. I want my uh, I want my gallon jug of uh, moonshine. Still no hammer. Why can I not get a hammer? I can't get a hammer. None of these kitchens are giving me a hammer. Molasses. No moonshine this time. That's funny. Uh, we'll get that. Yeah, no moonshine. Hmm. Yeah. That's it. We're out of here. <clears throat> so, again, from a tactical standpoint, I approached, stopped backwards a ways, snuck up, went up the tower to take a look around, circled around to the bottom so I could approach the house from the side that the zombies were not, loot the house and the shed and get out of here. So just minimizing danger, minimizing risk. So you always need to be thinking about that kind of stuff. Uh, you don't want to just try to fight and tank every single zombie. It can be done. See my last build with the lumberjack. <laughs> but uh, it takes a little bit of knowledge. Zombie avoidance game sounds like Zomboid. I can't avoid zombies in that game. <laughs> I'm constantly stomping zombies in the neck. It's the zombie neck stomping game is what that is. <laughs> it's, a, it's a zombie neck stomping simulator. It's all I seem to be doing in that game. CDDA still looks overwhelming. The advantage CDDA has over Dwarf Fortress. So Dwarf Fortress and Cataclysm are commonly referenced in the same topics. If people ask about uh, what are the most complicated, biggest, toughest games to learn, those two are at the top of just about every list. So they get handed back and forth quite often. The biggest difference that Cataclysm has is that it's at least in a real world setting, so you know what all the stuff is. With Dwarf Fortress, there's so much, so, so, so many made up names, made up things, uh, stuff that you're not going to be really familiar with. Uh, it's a lot harder in that regard. But Cataclysm, I mean, you're, you're going into a house, you recognize all the furniture, you recognize all the loot, you recognize all the food, everything at least you're familiar with for the most part. Um, yeah, it's got weird exotic monsters in some cases and that, but the world itself is uh is is known and, and such so at least it has that that helps a bit the control scheme will still drive just about everybody nuts initially and there's just so much choice there's so many things you can do it can be really hard to figure out what you should be doing um and that's i think some in some way one of the things that fails the game a bit analysis paralysis and just uh what do once you get past the how do it's the what do and why do <laughs> Scroll down, scroll down. So much chat, so much chat. There were there were some attempts at isometric tile sets. You can go look at them, but they have nobody's been maintaining them for a long time. There aren't any current ones. Yeah, hopefully you recognize your mom when she shows up and starts whooping you. <clears throat> I haven't actually seen my mom in game forever. All right, shall we roll down that way? I'm going to roll this way first. Let's see if we can connect over to this road network. Get that uh, get that possibility resolved. Hmm. 
Nope. Alright, so we're starting to hit forests. We're gonna get cul de sac -ed. My favorite thing in the world, getting cul de sac by the map gen. I think you can get somewhere and it sticks a forest in the front of you. Oh, but they gonna let me around it? Sometimes it happens. Oh, it's a golf course! It's a golf course! Where's my where's my golf bag? Where's my golf bag? Just a bunch of birds. Bunch of birds. Bunch of birds. They've added a bunch of birds. <laughs> if you haven't noticed, there's a lot of birds now. Whole bunch of birds. Uh alright, nothing dangerous so far. Let's uh let's pop in. Yeah, let's just pop in from right here. What's the movement rate in this? 150 in sand? Alright. <laughs> I'm just curious if they actually thought about changing the movement cost of uh, moving through sand. The answer is yes, they did. Golf bag! I have a golf bag! I love my golf bag! Alright, I don't need anything else in here. How about snacks? Empty. Empty. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, we don't need shoes. We don't need hats. We don't need gloves. Let's check upstairs, see if the uh, snack bar, whatever they call this section. What is this section called? Clubhouse? Looks more like a snack bar to me. Cabernet Sauvignon? <laughs> no thanks. Eh, nothing up here we need. Alright, at least they had a golf bag. I was, I was worried they wouldn't even have one. Okay, let's uh, unload our molly pack that's filthy and getting me infected constantly. Then we will ditch the molly pack. Then we will go to our golf bag, go to the auto pickup settings. Then press the P key to give it a priority. Then type in the number 50. Any number that's high gets the items first. So I'm setting it to 50 just because. It could be anything from, I think, 0 to 99. But uh, I'm going to set it to 50. Anytime I pick something up now, it's going to automatically go into the golf bag first until it's full. And then it'll overflow into the other things. I need to empty my motorcycle armor too. Unload motorcycle armor. Do I want to keep that armor on? I'm not sure I do. I'm still mostly in avoidance mode. Yeah, I guess we'll keep it on. It's not hurting me much. 50 torso encumbrance is coming from uh, the other source. Arr, come on. The other keys. Yeah, it's the golf bag that's causing the uh, torso. Much more so than that. 18 versus 30. So, yeah. Uh, we just have to remember to ditch the... Yeah, I don't need the uh, the, com the motorcycle armor while I've got the <laughs> the stupid backpack because I'm in total avoidance mode. I'm not gonna want my golf bag to get thrashed, so I'll be avoiding any fights. So let's ditch it for now. All right, so that'll help out a bit. Other than that, we got shorts and socks and um, work pants. Oh, why did my work pants get the armor? What the hell? Those, did that have 14 items, or did the 14 items from the armor go into the work pants? Because it should have gone into the golf bag. Hmm, weird. Alright, everything's in the golf bag now. As it should be. Don't want to get more encumbrance in my, my pants. <laughs> All right, uh, not much else at a golf course that we can get that's of any use. Uh, I don't care about a hunting blind. We'll trundle south real quick to check that endpoint. I'm probably going to go this way first, and then we'll roll back again. I've mentioned we're just kind of pivoting around uh, Barrington here. So we'll just go a little further out to the west, then we'll come back and we'll check this area out and keep moving. Uh, south first. Let's find the end of this south leg here. Uh, not directly. Well, if you mean infect... Wait, what? <laughs> what are we reading here? What's the infected question? Is it regarding the, the dirty clothing or is it regarding the, uh, the challenge? <laughs> 
It's regarding the dirty clothing. If you're wearing dirty clothes and the body part gets hit that has the clothing on it, then you'll get effectively what's called a bite. It's called a deep bite, but it's basically your wound gets dirty. And uh, if you don't clean it out, you'll it'll turn into an infection. Now, we changed off of the infected scenario. Originally, the scenario was an infected scenario, but uh, we changed out of that. It was proving the, the infection mechanics are pretty rough right now. I've been complaining about them for a while. But the combination of the world settings and the infected start was just getting bothersome. So after a bunch of attempts, we, uh, we switched out of infected over to a surrounded start, and then I adjusted the world settings to m turn it back onto hard mode in other ways. But the infection setting was pr proving problematic to what I was actually trying to do this challenge, which is look at the, um, the new book systems and learning systems where we now have, uh, theoretical traits and practical trait or theoretical levels of experience for the skills as well as practical and the proficiency system and the ability to use an e-ink tablet PC to electronically store books. So the infected thing was just getting in the way of that whole process. So we switched out of it. Uh, craft shop. That is the glass craft shop, I believe. Yeah, that's going to be the glass one. Stained windows, glass, and uh, I forget the one it pairs with. Pottery? I think it's pottery. It's not the metalworking craft shop. Uh, but we do have access to a few outlying buildings. That's good. Uh, I think I got the attention of... Well, nope, haven't gotten the attention of the zombies yet. That's also good. Hazmat zombie right there, huh? hoping to make a stealthy trip into that building but it's kind of isolated let's uh, stop here for a moment if I can move just oh, zombie hunter 55 hanging out in the city or in that house yeah I think I can get to it without attracting something brainless zombie we're okay from that all right, we can make it in. Uh, we'll have to uh, pick a lock. I still don't have a pry bar. Lock successfully picked. Big book of first aid, score! Yay, we needed that. Nothing in the bathroom? <laughs> it's one of the most important things. Let's start creeping. Try to lower our visibility level. Sneakers. Soldering iron. I don't have a soldering iron. We'll take some copper wire. Where's my hammer? I'm still looking for a hammer. I don't know if I have a pot either. There it is. We got our hammer finally. Okay, uh, don't need any of that. Mayonnaise and beer. <laughs> I can go without mayonnaise and beer. Another rubber hose. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, it's a zombie. Binoculars. Oh, now we're talking. All right, now we're on the move. We're grabbing the binox. And we are out of here. That's pretty much it for the house anyway. Uh-oh. Is it the hunter? No. Nope. Alright, we can outrun him. Okay, that was a big score. We got some good stuff out of that. Let's see. So we looted that one. We're going to get cut off if we go any further, so I'm not going to go into there yet. That's a football field. That's bad news. Cathedral's pretty bad news. Let's roll up the other way. Okay. Uh, I've done the hospital start. Quite a few times. I haven't done it super recently, but uh, I've done it quite a few times. 
I guess it kind of depends on which kind of hospital it puts you in. There's different designs now. I think the scenario... I, I have no proof, but I would uh, believe the scenario would put you in the original hospital design, not the newer one. But I'm not sure of that. Either Bim Durian, thanks for dropping a gift sub. All right, let's uh, let's get moving back this away. More gift subs. Has uh, looked like some fairly deserving folks. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Here are some uh, limited edition zombie dogs. Make sure you keep a hold of those. What do we got? A bar? I don't need a bar. Yeah, it looks like just a bar and maybe some more houses we'd have access to. Necro Boomer and a Predator. Uh oh. <laughs> we hit something. Medium boulder. Ouch. Ouch. See, this is an opportunity right here. We got a house with a tall fence. House next to it. No zombies immediately in the area. Except for that guy there. Oh, and a zombie dog. And they're both coming this way. I don't think they saw me, and they shouldn't have been able to hear me, so I'm not sure they are actually coming for me. I think they're just randomly wandering. So let's move out ahead of them, and we'll just let some time pass. Yeah, look at these guys streaming down. I don't know what's attracted them going that direction. Whoops, and somebody saw me. Somebody came out from this direction, and they're coming up right behind me. So that's unfortunate. Is that a helicopter crash? I think that's a helicopter crash. Shh. A uh, small flyer wreck. All right, let's go investigate that while this zombie comes up behind me. A pilot? That's probably going to mean it's a small one. Uh-oh, wasp. Err. Huge bee? That looks more like a dermatic. Huge bee. Two bars of health to two bars of health. Anything on the ground? I saw the word thermal and got kind of excited, but it's not the kind I need. <laughs> 16,000 JP8 fuel on the ground. Who's winning? That's kind of funny. I actually wasn't expecting the, uh, the pilot to win that one. Pilot did win it. So, I don't know why these guys are hanging out over here. kind of want to smash that zombie child to the north, but I'm afraid I'll hit the trees if I try to run into it, or drive into it. Yeah, it's heading back up into the trees. <laughs> Why? Why? Oh, uh, never mind. Alright, we had four coming at us now. Hmm. Alright, let's just get, whoops, let's get everybody involved. Everybody come over here. We're all going to go for a short ride. Follow me. That should be good enough. It's funny, the Humvee... Oh, uh, we ran out of JP-8. <laughs> the Humvee is too heavy for its engines. Zero speed. I'm like, what? That always surprises me when that happens. All right, engines. Uh, control engines. Switch over to... Uh, what the hell? Yeah, the only one that we can pick. Ignore. All right, yeah, we, we just ran out of JP-8 that it was running on. So now we're running on diesel. <laughs> Always scary when that happens. Like, what? I broke something. No. Oh, crap. I didn't mean to get close to the predator. 
Damn it, every time I come up here, something else is in the area. They're breaking the fences. I, I thought I had an easy time. I was going to be able to jump over this fence and loot these two houses, but... It was not to be. These two I think I might just run over. Oh crap, I gotta be cautious. I got stuff coming up behind me. I don't want to keep leading things away constantly. And the skeleton didn't come out of the area over there. I was starting to say the uh, the semi had better off-road than uh, the, the Humvee here does. I'm not going fast enough. I can't ram them if I'm only going 10 miles per hour. Terrible off-road. What are we at? 30%? Oh, so, pretty bad. Ugh. Pretty good at hitting boulders, though. <laughs> oh, man. The guys I led south are coming back this direction for no particular reason. Hey, guys, you're supposed to be going this way. Why are you going back northwest? One more loop around. This time I'll probably get the attention of, yep, the predator. <laughs> All right. I got a kill on sight for predators. Dead predator. Treakling. Ah, damn it. I can't line them up. There's too many out here. And I don't want to wreck the vehicle just for an opportunity to loot a stupid house. All right, I think maybe it's time to move back on. Let's uh, let's leave this place alone. Too many potential problems. We're gonna go down that way, I think. Need to find a nice fat Apache helicopter wreck or a soldier body sight with a fully loaded M249. You know, something fun. Oh, instead we found a science lab. Color me shocked. I never find those things nowadays. We've actually got ID cards. But I don't want to use the ID card because I want to break in and pop the uh, the turret with one of my grenades. So, let's uh, park here. Let's see. I don't have an acetylene torch for the door. I'd have to take the wall out. Labs are super... Well, it depends on what you mean by labs. There are two... Well, technically now three different kinds of labs. There's the old science labs, which is what this is. This is the old traditional version. Then there's the newer square labs that are mostly uh, accessible by subway. Those are all set design. They're not randomized. They're an exact uh, set map. And they're really, really dense with enemies. Really dense. And um, very little of the traditional final loot that you would get. There's no finale rooms. There are some rooms that you can get some serums and some CBMs and stuff out of, but they're very different. And then there's the brand new labs. One of the things we're going to be investigating this run, which is these Transcoast Logistics facilities that are actually fronts for labs. Um, they're the new what's called modular labs. The intent is for them to replace the old science labs eventually, once they've tested them a bunch and made a bunch of changes and, and so on. So these science labs are going to go away eventually. But yeah, it depends on which kind of lab you're talking about. These old science labs are hella rare nowadays. They drastically reduced the map gen spawning of these things. 
Um, I've, I've had whole challenges where I've done nothing but just drive for 10 hours and never found a single one. So, the old, other than that, they're the exact same as they've always been. Other than they've added one or two new creatures, like the barrel security guard that has a pistol. But, if anything, the science labs are way easier than they used to be. Reasons? You mean reasons why they're replacing the old labs? Mainly because the way they're built or designed, the coding and such, they have problems uh, and they can't fix them simply through coding. So they need to get rid of them and start fresh in order to code them properly so that they don't have certain issues. Stairs being the, the biggest problem. The way stairs works is uh, really bad <laughs> and really broken. But yeah, the science labs themselves are, are way easier nowadays than they used to be. For uh, quite a few reasons. Uh, so, how to do this efficiently. Uh, I don't have... I don't want to use an ID card because that would depopulate the turret that's sitting right here. In the past, I would take a pickaxe to the door, but you're not allowed to do that anymore. I don't have an acetylene torch to take the door down. I could ram it, but that would... Well, technically, it may not put me at risk because I could hide behind the, the, the console, but... Eh, depending on what happened with the risk, the, the impact, it might cause a problem. Uh, I could tunnel through one of the walls, but it's a double layer wall. Um, if I get rid of one layer, I can stand on a board. I don't have a board. I don't have a plank. I could go back to the, 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 the golf course and get a plank. Otherwise, we're going to fall in a pit when we knock this wall down. I could get creative. I could chop a tree down and have the tree knock the wall down. I haven't done that in a while. Do I have a... I have the wood axe. Yeah, we can do that. Let's do that because it's funny. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to do it because it's hilarious. Hey, wood axe. Come here, you. Wield wood axe. Actually, I don't need to wield the wood axe. What do we got? We got a few opportunities. We got at least, we got one back here. We got one here. And these are young trees. I don't think those will do it. So we got, uh, we got two opportunities. Activate. Uh, wood axe. Chop down a tree. That one. Fall that way. <laughs> We're in. <laughs> uh. Okay, we have access to the lab. <laughs> I haven't been able to show that one for quite a while. <laughs> oh, there's lots of other ways. I mean, uh, come on. I know so many ways to get into a lab, get out of a lab. <laughs> I just hadn't been able to do that one in quite a while. I thought it'd be fun. All right, let's go park closer to that corner. I heard somebody break something when I got in, so I think we have a guard or something in there. All right, next up, I need to make sure I've got my grenade. Hey, hey there, security guard. Get a little more distance from you. Fire. Hey, he brought me a heavy duty flashlight that I don't need. We'll unload the flashlights and what you got in the wallet. Just cash card and some bills. All right. Uh, let's reload. Okay, turn on the mining helmets. Don't have any computer skill yet. I could sit in the van or sit in the Humvee and uh, just read the computer book for a day, get my healing up like I need. That way I could hopefully access some of the low level computers. All right, so next step, we've got the hallway and the turret's gonna be right about here. Peak. So there's the turret. We are going to uh, wield our grenade. I have no throwing skill whatsoever. Uh, so grenade is in hand. We're going to 
activate Mr. Grenade. We're going to peek. We're going to throw Mr. Grenade. I think that'll still get it. And we're going to run. And we're still going to get hit by shrapnel because it's dumb. <laughs> At least we didn't take any damage. Just about got us. Please be gone, turret. Dirt's gone. All right, so 1,600 rounds of ammo just for us. Now I could go. Uh, I could go pop the door. Do I care? Um, no, nah, not particularly. Yeah, yeah, I know I'm overweight. This is where. I'm a bee comes and gets me while I'm overweight and I'm running around. Come on now. Okay, drop in that category or that side. All of those. Get your stamina back. Unload the belt. Drop the... Um... Really? Where'd the casings go? Did it not... Oh, they already hit the ground. All right, grab the ammo. So there we go. We've got uh, that done. Give me that magazine. Let's ditch the candles, tongs, the pot, soldering iron, and the wood axe. All the food. Keep the meds. Read the books. And drop that random stuff. Reload that mag. Alright, so we've got the uh, fully loaded rifle. We've got one spare fully loaded magazine. And we're carrying some spare rounds for reloads if I blow through those. Uh, I need to read the books. Ditch. Oh yeah. Uh, drop the IFAC. Oops, wrong one. All I want is the gauze 12 bandages. Whoa, nice one, IFAC. Nice. Didn't have any any uh, antiseptic. 12 bandages, 13 with the gauze. That is awesome. That surprises me. Okay, now we can drop the other books. And uh, we're good to go. I don't have a washing kit created, and there's no water source directly near me. We'll get one in the in the, the base. We'll get our we'll get our uh, our sheath cleaned up. Actually, I'm just gonna drop the sheath. Let's unload it. We'll ditch it for now. We'll just carry the knife. All right. So we're wearing nothing that's filthy. I have no armor, just regular clothes. We've got our mining helmet for light. Really important to have things like mining helmets. You want something that's uh, worn that you can turn on and off. The reason for that is uh, you just have to reach up and click it to turn it on. So it only takes a very small amount of action points. Whereas if you have a flashlight, typically the flashlight is in your pants or in your bag. And when you go to activate it or turn it on or off, you're actually having to take it out of the bag and then activate it and then put it back in the bag to deactivate it. And it's a huge amount of action points. You may not notice it typically, but if you're facing down a turret and you've just flipped on your flashlight, you've just burned a whole bunch of action points and the turret's going to shoot you in the face before you can turn it off again. Whereas with the mining helmet, you can actually get away with turning it on, seeing the turret and turning it off and not being shot. So kind of important. Less so now, because the turrets are all in set positions, and they're not random anymore, but, you know, stuff to know. Uh, is it time to eat the butter? Is it butter time? <laughs> I'm surprised the butter's still around with our 30 days uh, of uh, evolution already going by. Yeah, let's start eating the butter. I'm, I'm afraid it's going to go bad, so we will have a belly full of butter. All right, uh, so now we have quite a few bandages. Let's get away from the pile of stuff. Turn off our, our light. What do I need to re-bandage? Pretty much everything.
Poor to average. Yeah, let's get that back to poor to average. Poor to average. Poor to average. And we'll do one antiseptic on the leg. All right, now we're sitting pretty good. We've got our rifle, we've got our golf bag, we got the Binox recently, we got the Big Book First Aid, which we'll take advantage of here shortly. I want to at least poke my nose into the lab, though, and see what kind it is. Usually, usually with my luck, it turns out that it's an ice lab. Oh, here's the other thing you can get, by the way, <laughs> if you need rocks. I have a video, a quick tip video on my website called The Power of Trees, where I demonstrate this exact thing. Why do we have a gaping? <laughs> Apparently something's destroying uh, the, the ceiling in the lab. So that's not good. That's uh, like probably a Hulk, Kevlar, Scale Jug, uh, Giant Naked Mole Rat. <laughs> Something is strong enough to knock walls and such down. And we're getting, uh, we're getting collapsing. So that's, that's bad. That's bad. This is an advanced evolution world, so we got essentially 60 days of evolution has already occurred. And, um, yeah, it uh, could be anything. could be pretty bad. But, uh, yeah, I have a Power of Trees video where I demonstrate exactly this, how trees can get you into a lab. Also, you can use it to gather rocks by dropping trees into walls of a house or a building or onto the concrete. So if you ever come across a spot where a tree is right next to a sidewalk or something, you can just chop the tree down onto the sidewalk and you'll get these huge piles of rocks. You can also get rebar and other stuff. Just depends on what you knock it into. But uh, trees are pretty cool. Okay, what's on the other side? Nothing but the refrigerator. And the uh, dissector. Yeah, I can't get used to these graphics. They're killing me. <laughs> I'm going to be so hesitant in the labs now because I don't recognize things automatically. Activate mining helmet. So. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on, game. <laughs> That is so, so not fair. <laughs> so not fair. Yeah, Vendor Dirt called it. Yeah, vegetable oil you can't chug anymore. Vegetable oil makes you sick. Butter's still fine, but uh, no more drinking vegetable oil. They did fix that or change it. Somebody kept abusing it hilariously and, and yakking about it constantly and telling people to do it. So whoever that person is, you can blame them. Yeah, that is a, uh, that is a Hulk. Appropriately named. <laughs> that is a zombie hulk. Here, I'll, I'll zoom down. I'll, oops, oh, I forgot I was peeking. Uh, Alright, we'll just walk down. Oh crap, he's around the corner. So that's the problem with the stairs with the labs. When I peeked down the stairs, it shows me here. But when I actually go down the stairs, I'm here. That's one of the big problems with labs is the whole how stairs work and they're misaligned and so on. And it's a, it's a complicated thing. I don't know all the reasons, the details behind it, but apparently it's really hard to fix. And uh, so the solution is to get rid of these old style labs, basically. So we have a Hulk in here with us, though. Um, uh, hmm. And he's real close. I can kill it with a gun if I can stay ahead of it. We're down to move cost 124 base, and we're still losing 8% 8 to the pain I'm in. How am I still in so much pain? Yeah, we're going to have to uh, go back up. All right, we can't afford to go down there right now with the Hulk down there. And the real big danger is he could just hang out near the stairs. The next time I walk down, he could be waiting for me. And as soon as I hit the bottom of the stairs, he could punch me into a wall, and then we'd end up being killed pretty quick. So, I can do things like making noise to move him around a bit, which we might get away with doing, but we're going to pass some time and let him do a little wandering. We'll stay in reality bubble range so that the 
AI is still simulating the area, and he'll likely move around a bit. I just need him to not be right near the stairs. So, we needed to finish getting rid of some pain and do some more healing anyway. Uh, I didn't check the temperature while I was down there. So I, I don't know or remember if that was, uh... That was an ice lab. So let's take a quick drive. I just want to go down this road a little bit just to see the edge of the town. And then we'll come back and we'll park here and we'll we'll spend some time here doing some reading and some healing while we let that Hulk wander around knocking stuff down. Then we'll poke our nose back in. Lab's got opportunities if we didn't have a damn Hulk as the first thing in the <laughs> in the door. Hulks are one of the worst enemies in the game to get initially, so. Super strong, really fast, hard to kill. We can do it if I can just get enough bullets in him. Or if I can find uh, some of the science lab locations that I can get creative with. Alright, so uh, it's, it's lots of zombies. <laughs> All the cities are going to be full of lots of zombies. So let's just uh, reverse. Pretty much answered my question. I just wanted to double check if the... The forest and swamp line butted right up against the edge of the city. I was hoping it would open it up and I could drive around the edges. Uh, we don't get that luxury. We still have a northern approach we can check, but it looks like it's going to be forest blocking us up there too. All right, let's head back. So the trick now is I want to be close enough for the reality bubble, but not... <laughs> From north and below, you hear crash. The Hulk is still making noise. All right, so the reality bubble is two and a half squares in every direction around the character on this map. So one, two, and then halfway to that square. One, two, halfway to that square. So from here, we're in range of the uh, this side of the lab, at least. Now, the lab could sprawl out quite a ways. But I don't want to be too close. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. It's It randomly falls out under me. It randomly falls out under me. It'll be hilarious. So we'll, we'll get nice and close. All right, no other enemies nearby. That's great. So yeah, if you're not familiar with what I mean by reality bubble is the game world is effectively infinite. You could travel and travel and travel and travel and your hard drive will run out of space before the world start, stops generating. So effectively, the world is infinite. It's not really infinite. There are reasons why it, it's not, but it's effectively infinite. <laughs> You'll never see the end of the world. It just keeps generating new world out ahead of you. It can't simulate everything at once. So uh, all the birds over here at the golf course, they're not currently doing anything. They're frozen in time. Uh, they're just sitting there doing absolutely nothing. So what the game does is it simulates only the direct world around you within two and a half spaces. So you've got kind of a square around you that we all generally call the reality bubble. Within that square, as you move around, the AI moves and, and does and affects everything. So the monsters move and interact and do their things and so on. And that's on all Z levels. So this is the primary Z level. Then the lab, when I went down one, is Z level minus one, down another level, Z level minus two, and so on. So it goes down ten levels and goes up ten levels. So all of those are processing simultaneously. So some environments, you can have a lot going on, even though you can't see much. This thing could be six levels deep, and there could be all sorts of nasty stuff going on down there. So they're all moving and activating and doing things. And with the advanced evolution I've got, there's some pretty hairy stuff down there. Uh, that can be knocking walls and ceilings and so on down, which is what that Hulk's doing. Um, there are some effects that happen outside the reality bubble, but the way they work is the game makes timestamps when you enter or leave reality bubble uh, range. So if I set this building on fire, for example, and stayed next to it, it would burn, 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 and then burn would go out and uh, it'd be a smoldering ruin. But if I set fire to it and then I left and came back a year later, it would restart the fire right from where I left off because it does not keep track of fire damage. But other things it does keep track of. So these houses over here, when I went next to them, it set their inventory, their items when I got close. So their items are set. But milk in the refrigerator, for example, if I go got it now, I could drink it. But if I leave and come back in a year, it's going to be completely rotten because it sets a timer for the milk. When I left the reality bubble, it said, okay, here's the timestamp. 
When the reality bubble comes back into contact with it, it checks the previous timestamp against the new one, and then it updates the condition. So it says, oh, you, you we timestamped this milk a year earlier. Let's now fast forward it a year, and now it's going to be rotten. So depending on what the effect is or what the mechanic is, some things are simulated with timestamp updates, and some things aren't. And there you go. That's the reality bubble of Cataclysm in a nutshell. <laughs> Um, so, let's, uh, stop driving. Turn off our lamp, which I had running. And we just reapplied some bandages. We're up to average. We must have gained a level in, uh, in first, or er, healthcare. We did. We got healthcare one. So I'm going to read the first, the big book first aid, so we can get to healthcare three. I think that'll get us to the next level of, uh, bandage ability. <laughs> Hopefully. And uh, we've got, I think, the final book as well. I think we got the first book and the final book. We're missing the middle intermediate book. I won't be able to bridge that gap for a bit. Uh, but we're just going to read and then sleep and heal up for a day. I need to get these legs back in good condition. So, uh, so we're done with that part. I just wish I had more disinfectant. That's the only downside right now. Um, what else to do? I don't really have much else to do. We've got food. We've got water. Um, let's finish reading these books, get them updated. We haven't found an e-ink tablet PC to do the digital conversions yet. So there's our choice. I do want to get the computers read. I might be able to hack the upper level computer to uh, get the map of the world with a computers three and a high intelligence. I definitely am not going to try to hack anything else with only a three computer skill. Yeah, so we've got the advanced emergency care, but we won't be able to bridge the gap from three to five. We can get to three, but we need five. Don't have the middle book. All right, so let's grab um, healthcare first. Um, read until I gain a level. Hey, oh, Ramgar. You look less 3D today. <laughs> uh oh, somebody's talking to me. <laughs> do I have? Uh, I don't have earplugs yet either, do I? I do not have earplugs yet. Um, that can be problematic with a lab. Let's see. I don't have the. I don't have uh, the skills or the materials either. makeshift earplugs i just need wax really cool that's a new one they've added that uh all i need to do for wax is go smash a toilet there are none here i think there's a bathroom back up at the golf station or the golf course we could smash that toilet for the wax to make the earplugs um there's also noise canceling headgear but i need some tailoring skill for that Can you explain how fungal blooms work outside the reality bubble? They don't work outside the reality bubble. They're frozen. Stay away from them and they don't grow. The problem with the fungus stuff is that the creatures... Alright, so earlier we saw a fungal bloom... Uh, where was it? Right there. So there's a fungal bloom. So we were driving down the road and we were seeing mushrooms. Now, the problem with these things is it's not this that you have to keep out of the reality bubble. The issue is that fungal towers and fungal blooms can have existing creatures when they spawn the map, when the map generates, you'll have the tower or the bloom, but their critters will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. This is about the range that you have to keep out of your reality bubble if you want to prevent fungal growth. Not that. You got to stay outside of this. <laughs> Because there could be one tiny fungal critter moving around deep in the forest this far away. And if you're staying away from this, but your base is here, and that fungal critter is in your reality bubble, your whole area is going to get saturated in fungus. That's the issue. It only takes one. One critter. So this is not the important part. <laughs> what you've got to do is you've got to find out if this is active, 
There's a lot of towers that will not be active. Fungal towers will a lot of times be defunct, so they will not actually be producing any fungus. So if you see a tower, but you haven't actually seen any mushrooms, go towards it. And if you're within pretty close range and you're still not seeing mushrooms, it's a defunct tower. It's not actually going to do anything. But if you know it's active, if you're seeing your mushrooms, you got to be super cautious because those things could be spread in a massive area outside and around that thing. So this is never the problem. It's the individual things that are hidden out here. This is why everybody advises new players that if you don't want to deal with fungus, either turn them off in the menus for the mods, which I don't recommend, but I mean, you can. Or be aware that they have this huge radius and that you're either going to need to stay well outside of that or just don't try to kill the mushrooms. Because people will say, oh, I'm going to just get, uh, get some matches and I'm going to go burn it out. No, you're not. Because you have this massively huge area that there could be a single spore cloud hiding in and the whole process starts over again. You burn this down, you go hunt everything down, then you go back to your base and you go to sleep and one little fungal creature that was hiding in a bush that you missed all of a sudden starts to cycle all over again. And you wake up and there's fungus everywhere. So they're going to be doing some changes to the fungal stuff. Um, it's been a topic for a long time. It also tends to tank performance on slower machines uh, because of how much movement of, of critters and clouds and fungal beds and so on occurs. Uh, 